Hold up, hold up. It's the way you call it, way you way you way you we get to talk about everything you say. Analyzing topics, I'm just not a twin. When you break it, 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 break Love. It's the weighing, call up and you're weighing. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge, we ain't playing. When you think it's about to end, should we crank it up again? Hold up, weighing, call up and you're weighing. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge, we ain't playing. And we do this every day, never ever duck a fade. Hold up, hold up. Greg and friends just keep it poppin', keep it poppin'. Dropping knowledge, switching up the daily topics, switch it up. The latest interviews, okay, okay, we got it. Okay, we got it. Your favorite podcast, my boy, yeah, we the hottest. Hold oh, up. You gotta wait it, wait it. Articulate, explain it, explain it. Lay it all out for debate and drop game, no, we ain't playing. Two squad fans, let me know where you at. It's all about a fight, you got that strap. All your biases can slay, unless you boys are getting the fade. Hold oh, up. It's the way it, call up and you're waiting. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, right? Dropping knowledge, we ain't playing. When you think it's about to end, should we crank it up again? Hold up. Yo, 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 yo. What up, what up, what up, my lovely people? Shout out to you, 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 and you out there. Hope everybody's good, man. Shout out to my Lord and Savior for another one, because without him, none of this would be possible, man. Shout out to Greg for another one. Brother, what's popping? What's happening? How's everything yeah. out there with you, man? Yo, man, everything is good, bro, man. Happy Friday to everybody. Thank you for joining us again for another show. And uh, for all of our listeners listeners and viewers, you know, thank you for being here with us on this Friday evening, Friday night. And um, yeah, man, we're going to be here talking some boxing. So if you're new to the channel or if you're here, as um, usual, you know, we hope you enjoy us. And definitely don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, hit that bell icon, man, so you know exactly when we come with a new video. And definitely check us out on the way in uh, boxing on Instagram, man. We post a lot of the latest news, a lot of fun stuff we do. And um, definitely check us out, man. But yeah, everything is good, man. Francis, I'm blessed. Blessed to see you another day, man. How's everything with you? Man, I I'm thankful, man. I'm thankful because we're one day away from getting another great fight. And that's yeah. exactly what we're here to do we're here to talk boxing we're going to talk we do have an amazing interview that we're going to be bringing to you and we hope you enjoy it uh we thought long and hard about this one and and it's time it's time for you know what i'm saying the 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 debut of this uh, particular individual also we want to talk about obviously jamal heron and carl frampton out there in dubai Right now, Fine. about the, you know what I'm saying, getting ready to get in the ring and swing tomorrow and, and put on a show. So definitely that's what's on the docket tonight. And, um, you know, everything else that's going on in the world of boxing. Now, nothing is really off the table, but that is our point of reference tonight is making our final predictions on Jamel Heron, Carl Frampton and final thoughts. Yeah, for sure, man. And we always looking out for Rafi Ramirez, man, because it's Friday. So, you know, that day is kind of. Reserved for him in, in some ways because, you know, you guys always get it down with the betting and stuff like that. So we'll see. You, know we, you know, we got to, you know, we got to get yeah. the parlays in for those who enjoy parlays. And for those who don't enjoy parlays, pardon us. Just take a second to just either li look away or listen away for a second. Whatever the case may be. But we're going to have to get the business done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. While the time is right. So, I, first of all, I want to tell y'all thank you very much for those who have taken the time out of their schedule to subscribe to the channel, The Way In, on YouTube. Please, that helps with the support, helps us grow. Also, while you're at it, you can hit the thumbs up button. The like button doesn't cost you anything, but it does. It does, Greg, help with the visibility of the show. Absolutely. We have a lot of content on the channel that we are continuing to build, and we look for your support. Also... You know what to do. Check out everywhere else that podcast is available. All you got to do is do what, Greg? Type in the way in. Say it again, Greg. Yeah. The way in, man. You could type in the way in one word. You could type the way in with Francis and Greg. Listen, you'll find us out here, man. So definitely do that. And yeah, continue to follow us and support, man. We definitely growing and um, we appreciate all of our listeners. Yo, you're and viewers. 
Yeah. <laughs> Your internet is killing you. Huh? But hopefully you're going to get better. It's, you sound like you really? DJing over there. For, for really, man. But that's another thing. You can work on that in the meantime. But uh, yeah, so we thank you so very much. Check out the YouTube page. We have a lot of things coming. Uh, a lot of great interviews. And um, yeah, just make sure you're off that Wi-Fi, brother. Make sure you're on the internet. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I, I think yeah. I am. We'll see. We're going to check it out, man. Yep. Hey, and for those who don't know, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to share a little thing about Toronto. We're going back into another lockdown. For those who don't know. So for if you're in the UK or wherever you are in the US, enjoy it if you're not in the lockdown. Because we are entering into another lockdown. How do you feel about this, Greg? Before we get man, more to buy. I'm kind of getting tired of it. You know, hopefully this is the last one. Hopefully we come out of this one, everybody doing their vaccinations and all that good stuff. So listen, man, um, hopefully not too many more lockdowns after this one, because I know everybody's itching to get back to normal. And um, so that we could also get out there, man, get out to some of these gyms and, and do what we know how to do. So so, um, so you get vaccinated? I don't know yet, man. I don't know. If, if everybody else does, then maybe I don't have to. <laughs> and, 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 no, because because you made a statement and you said that if, when everybody gets vaccinated, then we'll be back to normal. So, like, does that mean that you're getting vaccinated? Like, are you counting I'm yourself? Yeah, man. I'm I, I am undecided. Like I just said, if maybe if enough people do it, then I don't have to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. Yo, try, try going on come back. on that, man. But yo, try going on come back. Are you hearing me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, try going on coming back in. Yeah, it's that bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's tripping you out. Yeah, all right. Well, you know how it goes, show business. We're working on a few things right now, but in the meantime, um, we've put up a lot of fights that you know what I'm saying we feel like we like to see happen. So go on the YouTube page and check it out. Um, hit us in a DM if you know any fighters out there that want a platform to promote and market themselves, the weigh-in show is the spot for you. All you got to do is jump in and DM, hit us up, or, you know what I'm saying, have somebody you know get in contact with us, and we'll get the information locked in and make it happen. We have Jessica Kamara coming on the show. The Cobra! Jessica Kamara is coming on. She's going to be fighting Heather Hardy. You know Heather Hardy is, is somebody that's known So, Heather Hardy is known uh, in the female boxing world. So yeah, kudos to that. That's a that's a big fight, man. That's a big fight. Yep, so I'm excited for that fight. To, uh, get that fight to get going. Are you excited for that fight to get going, Greg? Uh, Jessica Kamara taking on uh, Heather Hardy. Yeah, man. No, I'm looking forward to it, man. Because um, Heather Hardy's a tough customer, man. You know, she in the MMA and she does boxing, and um, definitely going to be a tough fight for uh, Jessica. But a good fight, man. I think it's a good fight for both of them. Heather Hardy coming up in weight. Uh, so she's going to be able to test herself, man. It's going to be a good test for both of them, I think. So, yeah, man. We're going to talk to her a little bit about how she feels about the fight. All uh, right, cool. Um, want to get into this, Jamel Heron. Any final thoughts? You seen the weigh-in? Did you see the weigh-ins today with Jamel Heron and Carl Frampton? You know, I did see the weigh-in. I actually did see the weigh-in, man. And what's your thoughts on the weigh-in? Because I have a particular thought that I'll share after you. Well, I actually thought Jamel Heron looked pretty confident in um in himself, man. Um, you know, he looked ready for the fight. Both of them looked ready. Um, I noticed his uh height and reach advantage that he's most likely gonna have over Frampton. So um I think if he's able to use that to his advantage, um, that may be the difference in the fight to kind of keep Frampton off of him, man. But um, yeah, they both look they both look good to me. They both look good to me. It's just um we gotta see if Heron will be able to take advantage of his of his advantages, basically. Well, what what do you see with it? So I had two different points, right? So I'm going to okay. start with this, right? I'm going to start with 
both fighters went on the scale and they made the weight. Right. Half the job was done. There you go. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> right. Half the job was done. The other half yeah. is to fight. Right. That's right. Now, if you know, if you know how Carl Frampton fights, mm. if you don't come with a style like a Josh Warrington, a Leo Santa Cruz, you're going to have a tough time beating the Jackal. Yeah. Now, what are Jackals known for? Being Jackals, man, they just don't stop, man. Like, all you know, right. Yeah. So, the pure relentlessness. Now, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, Jamal Heron struggles with pressure fighters because of his, he, he has to fight at length, right? So, exactly. When the pressure's yeah. coming, he's, he's more fighting on the back foot to me. That poses a problem, in my opinion. So, how does Jamel deal with the pressure? I don't care how good the jab is, right? Because mm. if the jab, if the jab is good, Carl is relentless. Can he keep that jab for the amount of rounds that the fight needs to go? Can he maintain the pace at which Carl is going to have this high pace? Has he trained for the high pace? We know his pedigree is there. We're not. I'm not discrediting or denying his pedigree right. the pressure that this that that he fights with right that's the first right. that's the first real point right yeah. the second real point is Jamel Heron looked drained to me think, he looked okay. overtrained to me now it's either two things you see that he looked it's either that he is overtrained or he's in peak physical condition peak, yeah yeah it's one or the other for me but when I looked at it he just looked like a tired fighter. And I don't mean tired as in age. I mean tired as like I've been I've been training for a 90 while. seconds. Whoa. Yeah, I've been training for a while. Yeah, no, I know I know what you mean, man. But I mean, I guess we'll be able to see if he's overtrained if um, like you say, when the pressure comes, how his energy levels are being able to handle it. Because if he if he is weight drained, like he's saying. Um, Thank you for using. You know, that's definitely going to go down in Frampton's favor for sure, man. Say that one again, sorry. I said if he's weight drained, um, we're definitely going to find out because if he's not, like you say, if he's in peak condition, you know, I think he'll be able to handle and deal with the pressure that Frampton's able to bring. But if he is weight drained, I mean that that's a big problem because um, somebody like Frampton being all over you, I mean that's gonna that may that may actually make the fight end early, man, because you know Frampton's a beast in there. Yeah, we see how he reacted when he got a cut, right? Um, he excuse me, he, he didn't react the way that everybody kind of like you know would have expected him to react. Okay, yeah. he got past that, but that's all my concern is that pressure, the mm -hmm. the, the ferocity at which Carl Frampton fights with. I feel like is gonna is gonna pose a problem, but I could be incorrect. So, so you you're, think, um, right you're picking the fight real quick. Who you got in the fight? You know what? I have I have Herring winning. I do have Herring winning. But decision? you make some good point. Decision. Yeah, 100 percent decision. Unanimous or split? I think split because you know, um, the way Frampton fights, I think he'll get he'll get some rounds in his favor, maybe some of the closer rounds. Um, but I, I still got Herring winning by split decision. Um, a close split decision. And with Frampton, too, I also feel like you know. Because this is his third weight class, you know, will he be able to keep up that pressure for the whole fight? Being, you know, a little fighting at a bigger weight class. Maybe he's more comfortable, so it might not even be an issue at all. Um, but yeah, but I got Heron winning by decision. Like like the little engine that could. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out to uh, Carl Frampton, man, the Jackal. Salute, Sir Bishop, man. Appreciate you being in the building, showing up, you know what I'm saying? Showing some Absolutely, love. Absolutely, Sir Bishop. And tuning in. So I have uh, Jamel Heron also winning that fight. I have Jamel Heron winning um, by unanimous decision. Okay. But I feel, I could be wrong, but I feel like one of these two fighters is going to come off the canvas. Somebody is going to have to pick themselves up <laughs> off the canvas, whether it's Jamel Heron or Carl Frampton. Yeah. I don't know. You don't know which one, but yeah. I just don't know, but that's what I'm rocking with. That's just 
That's that 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 that's what I'm rocking. You just got with. that gut feeling, man. Yo, hey, you yeah. gotta roll with it, man. If that's how you feel, then it just might happen. Yeah, we're about to have our first guest. Uh, first guest, our only guest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one's kind of weird. Um, so you get them the the roll call. What they got to do? Um, who we got coming on, and then we're gonna bring our first guest on, our only guest on, our only guest for tonight. But yeah, but we're gonna bring her on in just a minute. Um, you know, she is a Canadian rated super lightweight, number two rated super lightweight in Canada. And um, she's been a former national champion and she's fighting April 23rd in Florida, man, on the Lou DiBella card against Heather Hardy, like we just mentioned. And you can actually catch that on UFC Fight Pass if you want to see that fight. But we got the Cobra, the Cobra, man. Jessica Kamara is going to be joining us. Hey, look who it is. Hey. <laughs> There we go. There you go. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> How you Thanks. doing? I'm, I'm good. Hold on. Oh, oh, no, not that one. Hold on. There Francis you go. Fixing the screen there. There we right. go. We got it. We good now. Go ahead, Gray. All right, man. So yeah. So thank you for being on the way, and thank you for taking some time out of your day to join us. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. For sure, man. So before we get started with all the boxing stuff, just give people just a brief background of um, you know, where you're from, where your family's from, and how you got started in boxing. Yeah, sure. Um. I was born in Cambridge, Ontario, actually. Okay. Um, I was born and raised there. Um, my family is originally from Portugal. Okay. So they basically had me within like a year <laughs> of living in Canada. Um, yes, yeah, so I grew up in Cambridge. And I started boxing when I was 19 years old. Um, I started boxing at uh, with, uh, with uh, Sid Vanderpool, a boxing by Sid. Okay. I uh, had a few amateur fights there, but I was with uh, the OBA, so it wasn't a big organ. I wasn't like fighting on big tournaments with the IA, but I didn't fight with the nationals or anything like that. Um, so I progressed from there and I moved to Toronto. Um, was training with Chris Johnson. That's when, th from there, that's when I started to uh, have fights with Boxing Ontario. Went to provincials, won provincials, won all those tournaments, made my way to nationals, won nationals. Now it was in 2014. Um, yeah, and then I was on the national team for a couple of years. I did only one big tournament, actually, was in Bulgaria. I walked out with a bronze medal. And it was a few years after that I decided to move to Montreal. And I began my professional career. That was four years ago. It's already wow. it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> How you doing? I'm Francis. <laughs> nice to meet you, Francis. Nice to meet you. Uh listen, um, I'm probably the wild card on the on the panel. You know what I mean? I sh shoot from the hip. So, you know what I'm saying? If you don't feel like answering nothing, don't I, I just, see no, you, have, you have a very <laughs> amazing smile. I just gotta tell you that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I just want to take it back a little bit, right? Because you yeah. gave us a, a, a whole mouthful right there. I want to dissect a little bit of it. Yeah. So, yeah. so before you started boxing, what were you doing athletically, if you don't mind me asking? Actually, my parents are very old school European, old school Portuguese. So me being the only girl in the family, I have two older brothers. I was never allowed to play sports. They were just like, yeah, sports aren't for girls. I had a book. My cousins were like in soccer in soccer teams. I always wanted to play soccer, but they never allowed me to play any sports. Um, they allowed me to play like at school for fun type thing, but they never let me. So once I actually got to an age where I was able to make my own decisions, I entered a boxing gym. <laughs> they weren't too happy about it, but they had no choice. Right. Um, I mean, now they're... Now they're proud of my accomplishments, but back then they just, they weren't having it. <laughs> so, so, so we understand that, you know, when you got to the rightful age for you to make decisions for yourself, you decided boxing gym. But when did that spark happen for boxing? Um, was, was it a particular fight or fighter that did it for you? Uh, no, actually. Well, I always watched like, um, I watched boxing on TV, but I was really, mo I was inspired by 
female fighters. My favorite movie of all time was um, Million Dollar Baby. So I was really inspired by that movie. I would watch it over and over. Fire, and fire, over. fire. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I actually, when I was growing up, I had a really, really close relationship with my godmother. She's my, my dad's sister. I spent a lot of time with her. Um, like on weekends, I was always with her. On summer breaks, I was always with her. Um, <clears throat> didn't really have a close relationship with my mother. Um, so she was more like that mother figure to me. Um, so when I was 17, she she died of cancer. Sorry and, to hear that. Yeah, well, thank you. But um, I had a hard time coping with that. And because of all the, that emotion, I was just angry all the time. Um, and I was generally like a quiet, very shy person. Um, in school, I never was never I never got into trouble. And because of just all of this emotion that was inside of me bottled up, I got into this big fight in high school where it was bad. Like I almost, Ooh. I think I I I could have killed a girl. I think uh, so. I got expelled. I was, <laughs> I think it was, yeah, it was, well, it was right before actually my godmother wasn't even dead at this point. She was on her deathbed, like, but, but I knew it was coming, but you know, wow. like, it was just kind of this, like, uh, I didn't know how I was going to cope with all this because she was just that person I would always kind of confide in. Right. And, um, yeah. So from there I got expelled. I got charged. Police came to school. And then it was kind of like, oh, wow. Cause like when I grew up and my brothers were always the bad ones. And I always like, I always promised my godmother, like, you know, I'm going to be the good one. I'm not going to get in trouble with the police. And you know, yeah. and it happened, but it was just like, I wasn't expecting it. I like blacked out. It just, I was, I was surprised. So it was just big, a big eye opener. A few weeks after that, actually my, my, my godmother did pass away and I was expelled from school. Um, I was charged. I had to deal with going to court and doing all that at a very right. young age. I had a lot on my plate. And from that moment, I just decided I got to, I got to pick myself up and it was on me to do all that. Um, so that's what and I what, did. On what age was this again? If you don't mind me asking. I was 17. 17. Okay. Continue. Yeah. So from there, I, I decided, you know, I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to work my way back into school. I'm going to get good grades. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to do all the good things. Um, so I worked, I did, I went through all the court procedures. I did all the community service. I, I overachieved everything basically. So they said I had to do 50 uh, community service hours. I did a hundred within like a very short period of time. Um, so I was just like overachieving. I spent every, like, all my time just setting goals and achieving them. I just didn't waste any time. Um, so I went back to school, got like straight A's. Uh, after that, I decided I wanted to go to college and I needed, I wanted something that was really going to motivate me, but fitness was always something that really motivated me, but I was never really into it. Um, so I decided, okay, I'm going to take police foundations. You know, I want to help people in the same um, situations that I was in, you know, help the young kids and, you know, help right. turn their life around. Right. So I, uh, I applied to these foundations. I got in and the fitness aspect was what really kind of intrigued me. So I told myself, you know what? I'm going to get the the best female athlete award. And I wasn't even in shape. So before, <laughs> before like I didn't work out at all, but I was just determined. Um, before starting the program, I went out to there. I had a, a track right behind my house. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go out and run. And I couldn't even finish it. A, a lap around the track without without stopping. I was like dying, wow. but every day I would just go out and run a little more, run a little more, and I became to be. I I was a decent runner at the end of it. I got into school and I actually finished the program and I won the best female athlete award. Wow! <laughs> but oh, I was really just cool. I I wasn't really when I first started. I wasn't in the best shape, but I just right. worked my ass off. But when I was in that program, I met somebody who was a box. She was a boxer in at Sid's gym. So she's like, Oh, come, come by, check it out, do a class. So I did. And I was just amazed, but like amazed by what it did for me 
You just, mm-hmm. I went in there, I let everything out, all my aggression, and you, yeah. you let that, you let that bag have it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, when I first started, I was not a natural at all. Like I couldn't skip everything that was taught to me. Everybody that taught me what I what I learned, they had a hard time teaching me because I was just not a natural. Like, first of all, I was slipping to like one side. <laughs> <laughs> and I was learning how to, how to slip. Um, but yeah, I just kept working. Yeah. Working overtime, you know, coming to the gym, being the first one in the gym, the last one to leave. And within a year I was competing. So, so was that during that time what you were working with Chris Johnson during that time? No. I uh, I started off with uh, Sid Vanderpool. I was with Sid Vanderpool for like a good seven years. Okay, oh, wow. that was your, so that was your foundation. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you went from there, and you met Chris Johnson. How did that uh, How did that happen? Well, I actually I actually wanted to turn pro. Um, I did, well, I was in the OBA, and the OBA they only had like a certain amount of girls. Um. So I was fighting the same girls over and over again. It just got to a point where there was just nothing left for me. So I was like, hmm, I'm turn pro. But I always wanted to turn pro. That was my ultimate goal was to turn pro. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had spoken to Chris Johnson about wanting to turn pro. Because at that time, it was um, when he had like, well, it was actually after. But I had noticed that he had like a, uh, Logan Cal McGinnis, uh, Sam Vargas, like all fighting at, um, yep, yeah, mm-hmm. yep, at um, I'm drawing a blank. What's the promotional company? Oh, for, what Lee Baxter promotion? Lee Baxter. No, not Lee Baxter. United. United yeah. promotion. United. United. Sorry, I just drew a blank. Um, yeah, so I would go to those events and I would notice that he had like all those. So I was like, mm, okay, like he would be the guy, you know? So. I spoke to him and he's kind of like, oh, well, you don't really have too much amateur experience. So why don't you, so that's when I, you know, I was actually traveling back and forth from Cambridge to Toronto, like every day. Well, Mississauga, that's where he was mm-hmm. back and forth. And then it just got like, too much. So I decided to, to move up there. So I trained with him for a couple of years and, um, what was that like? Nationals. He's a, he's a fantastic coach. Um, he taught me a lot. He can really get in your head, but we. <laughs> what do you mean? You really made an example. He can really get in your head, and when you're in the corner, and turn that spark. You know, he knows what to say to you. He. Okay. Yeah, so he can really get you that fire, that fire going inside of you. You know, but he's a really good technical coach. But um, personality-wise, we kind of. Clashed heads at the end. <laughs> had a little falling out. Um, I, actually went, I actually went to train with uh, Adrian Tadruscu. I have yeah, a, he had, um, Atlas Gym, I think. Yeah, at Atlas. Yeah, Atlas Gym, yeah. yeah. And it was actually after he had passed away, it was when I moved to Montreal. I was actually supposed to have turned pro with Adrian. Okay. He passed away, and then I was like, you know, what am I going to do now? And I was like, well, Montreal's kind of the hot spot. You know, they, they promote a lot of their fighters. A lot of the fighters are, getting, are more active than in Ontario, especially females. So I just decided, okay, I'm going to just move up there and pack my bags up and, and left. I actually owned a house. I had bought a house in, in Cambridge uh, two years prior to that or you know, three, four years, something like that. And I sold it and just kind of. Wow. Just, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Greg, to, pursue, a... to pursue my. Your dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So before going pro, you never thought about maybe Olympics? Not at all. Uh, that, it, I don't really have that style. Okay. okay. I'm more of like a, I like to bang. I like to go to war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas in the Olympics is more of that. That more point. Pretty pattern stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, talk yeah. to real quick before we get into. We got a question from the people, but before we get into that, I, w- I wanted to. I wanted to. Greg, you had another one. No, no, go ahead, man. I'll get to I the. Wanted, the yeah, because you listen. We. Yeah, we cook. I, I don't know about. I'm. We're girl dads. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so, oh, you got a daughter. Yeah, yeah both so of we us. Rock, yeah. We, <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah, both of us. So we we I, I'm 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 about my baby a hundred percent of whatever she trying to do. I'm about it. <laughs> like no cap. So it's a, I, when it comes to females in sports or anything, I'm always about it. So talking to you is like you know what I'm saying it excites me because I get to ask you questions that you know what I'm saying I can potentially use you know what I'm saying to help <laughs> my daughter. Hey, I gotta keep it on. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, real, sure. But no, but for real though, um, talk to us about your promotion, like your team. Because, you know, you're only as good as your team, right? So give us a little rundown of your team and and, and what role they play in, in your career so far. Um, well, my, my coach is Ian McKillop. Um, basically, basically when I moved when I moved to Montreal, I was like, you know, I'm going to try out some different gyms um, and just see where I fit. Don't speak French. Still don't speak French. A little bit, but <laughs> I yeah, didn't know when I came here. So... That was a factor too, you know. I didn't want to go into a gym where the language barrier was going to be an issue, so uh, I I had reached out to Sh Shaquille Finn because I was I was following him, you know. He I know he spoke he spoke English. He's in Montreal, so I messaged him. I'm like, hey, do you know of any gyms um, that I can train at? I'm moving to Montreal. I want to turn pro. And he's like, oh, actually, my coach and I are opening up a gym. He's like, it should be ready within a couple weeks, and I basically. Went to the gym like the first week it was open and I met Ian and we did pads and then we just clicked. I just didn't even go to any gyms after that. I was like, okay, like, I like him. He, he had a lot of connections. He seemed like, you know, he knew a lot about boxing. He knew a lot of people. So yeah, so I, I trained with him in January of 2017. And I was had my pro debut March thirtieth, two thousand seventeen. Wow! Quick, okay. yeah, yeah. Was quick. He got me a fight. Shaquille was actually headlining that event with a group of Michelle. Uh, we al we also have um, help uh, with Edwin Aguiar. Okay. He mm -hmm. uh, he's actually he works with Patrice Volney also. Um, this is one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um. Brian Cohen is my my manager. He manages, like, I don't know, about like 20 other female fighters. Right. He's actually the one that got this big fight. <laughs> actually, okay. I only started uh, to I, – I was signed with Brian after I had my fight with um, Melissa St. Phil. That was my last fight. All okay. right. So that's, my, that's my team pretty much. Yeah. And, and that's been your team from the start? Apart from yeah. your coaches, apart from your coaches, that the trainers that you switch. Um, since my professional career, I well, I started off with a different manager, uh, Bush Scott Libby. Um, and then since my my last my last fight, I uh, signed with um, Brian Cohen. He actually was managing Melissa Saint Phil, so he was actually in her corner after the fight. We right. got in and yeah. All right, cool. Listen, man, we got to get the people to add their questions. Yeah, yeah, we got a few questions them. from our listeners. Yeah, just a few. Go ahead, Greg. Just a few. Yeah, man. So we have a question from Sir Bishop. He says, salute, Jessica. He's like, I appreciate your story. Tough sparring often helps prepare for fight night. Do you ever spar men to prepare for your fights? Uh, yeah. I mean, if, if, there's no, if there's no females available, sometimes we run into issues. I do spar with men. Um. They can give me work, but it's just more ideal. I see Phyllis sometimes when you spar with men, they tend to take it easy on you because you're, oh. you're... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I right? guess that could be the I case. Spar yeah. with bigger men. So I do spar with men, but um it's only when there's not really any girls around to to spar. Right. Um we got another question from Twin Munios. Um, what fighter do you watch the most if you do watch boxing? What fighter do I watch the most? Um, I love watching Canelo. Okay. Yeah, Canelo. Every fighter love to watch Canelo. Yeah. Oscar Valdez. <laughs> I love Mexican boxers. They just okay. Yeah. Is that your style? Sorry. Is that your style of fighting? Yeah, kind of, kind of. Yeah, kind of, kind of have a Mexican Mexican style. So you like to rumble. I like to rumble. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a first females, I love watching Amanda Serrano. Okay. okay. Right. She bad. Five mm -hmm. division world champion. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, I would love, love to see her and Kitty Taylor fight. Like, 
that fight is just yeah <laughs> you got in that fight since we're talking about it who do i got yeah let's test your knowledge oh it'd be tough but i'm a big amanda serrano fan but i would have to say katie taylor probably oh <laughs> what why is, why is that what do you say why is that Katie go be Amanda Serrano. I'm a big Amanda Serrano fan. Like I don't know that fight would be uh, that fight would be, but I just feel like Katie Taylor punches like a dude. Like yeah. <laughs> Amanda's got power, but Katie Taylor just you just watch her punch and I'm just like oh, like fuck. So so how comes that? So how comes Parsoon couldn't feel all that? Oh, I think she felt that. Christine's just fucking. She's, she's tough, hurt. man. She's tough. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's tough. <laughs> she's stopped a lot of a lot of her opponents. So um, who who came? Ah, uh, you know, I gotta do it. Um, who's your pound for pound? Give me your pound for pound list. Uh, top five females right now in boxing currently. Five top five or oh. um. Give me top three. Katie Taylor, Clarissa Shields, Amanda Serrano. That's a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yo, Jessica, I like your style, yo. <laughs> you like that, yeah. Is that right? <laughs> nah, what well, that? you, you're right. That's your, yeah, that's your. <laughs> <laughs> but is, that, is that your top three? Nah. No? Nah, I got the quote, man. I got the quote. Yeah, yeah, the greatest yeah. of all, the greatest woman of all time. She, yo, two time Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, for sure. Yo, she, what? Undisputed what? in two different weight classes. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, none, none of these girls want to smoke with Clarissa. I don't care. I don't care. None of them. None of them. No, she, uh, all due respect to her. You know, she's, she's, what she's achieved in the sport. Yeah. But, in a short time, though. I would have to put Katie Taylor on top. You got that. <laughs> though, before we get it, because listen, man, this is what happens. See what I mean, Greg? Like, I get on here and I start talking to these fighters, and, and we get to talk, and the time just go by. So I'm going to try to get to it quick. Like, tell me why. Like, why why Katie Taylor is above uh, Clarissa, in your opinion? Um, I just think, well, they have both fought, like, the, the top females in, in their categories. But I just think that the the opposite like the opponents that they faced that Katie Taylor faced higher quality opponents as to uh Clarissa Shields and Clarissa Shields isn't able to stop a lot of her opponents. You know, she has a she has a lot of power, but I don't know. I don't know if she's just missing her last fight was actually really good. She settled down a lot more and I see that she was like she's explosive, explosive. But I feel that Katie Taylor is able to put her opponents out faster. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who was the yeah, last no, no, I know you're saying. Who was the last opponent that Katie Taylor put out? Fuck. I can't even think back to it. All right, cool. I'm gonna let you, Jessica. When we when we come out to see your fight, mm -hmm. I'm gonna remind you of this and we gonna sit down, right? And we're gonna talk boxing because yeah. I'm a boxing head. Trust <laughs> me, I tell you. So, but tonight. We talking to you tonight and perfect segue. You're fighting a very tough opponent, somebody who's known to be game whenever she steps in there. She's an absolute dog when it comes to selling tickets and and just being um, you know, showing female fighters just how to get it when they don't want you to get it. You mm -hmm. know, what I'm saying? and Heather Hardy is definitely, you know, what I'm saying I would say the 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 thing that fe fighter female fighters coming up that's trying to work in the ranks, her blueprint, like. Watch how she sells tickets and kind of, I need to say, you know, her fight. She has some tough fights. She fought that tough yeah. style. How do you feel about this fight? Talk to us about this fight. How did this fight happen? Um, the whole, the whole kitten caboodle. Well, basically, um, well, it was my manager that made the, the fight happen. Um, so we had talks about it happening earlier this year. But we were kind of like, oh, we don't know if it's going to happen just because of COVID, everything that was going on. Um, but we stayed ready. Like, you know, I still stayed, stayed in shape. I was out doing my, my road work. Um, and then it wasn't until 
like beginning of March that we got the contract and we're like, okay, it's going to happen April 23rd. And it honestly, it feels like it's, she's like a perfect opponent for me, hmm. uh, for my style. And it was just perfect timing. You know, I feel like she picked the wrong girl for her comeback fight. <laughs> <laughs> and she's moving um, up too. And she's moving up in weight. Yeah. And I, I've learned, I learned a lot from my, my previous fight with, um, with the same Phil and you know, I had to fight through that fight with uh, a big hematoma on my head. That was my first 10 round fight. And I love fighting 10 rounds. You know, I feel like I, I get better as the rounds go on and being the opponent, like the fighter that she is, she's not a runner, you know, she's, she's game, you know, she comes forward. Mm -hmm. um, she's used to fighting at a lighter weight class and she's going up. So I feel like she's gonna, She's going to run into issues with my power. I don't know if she's going to have the same steam, as, uh, given that she's you know, going up in weight. I'm just expecting an overall war. Like I want to just put on a good performance. I want it to be a good fight for, for the fans. Yeah, I think it's going to be for sure. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, too. I noticed that you had the chance to um, train down at the Mayweather gym. Um, how was that experience for you? And who did you get to rub shoulders with? Did you get any tips from any of the Mayweathers or how did that yeah. go? Um, honestly, I, I, I've been there a few times. I love, I love training there. It's a different atmosphere. Ugh. Everyone trains, trains hard. Um, I did get some rounds in with Alayla McCarter. Ooh, tell me about that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Couldn't let that one by. Let me know what's up. What's going on? <laughs> she's experienced. Um, the one thing I oh, realized yeah. when I stepped in the ring with her, sparring with her, she's really relaxed. Like her jab just come out like naturally. So just getting that experience, and you know, you kind of, you know, you want to move like her, and but it was generally it was it was good sparring. Like <laughs> I got in some good ones. You know, she got in some good ones. Um. Good work, you know, it's good. And they do a doghouse style. What is it like? Uh, doghouse rules no, no, no uh, clock, no clock. They no. just go until somebody quit. <laughs> I didn't see any of that in the gym either. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but over there, it's like when you spar, it's like you know, it goes down. I also did some work with uh, Jamie Mitchell, she's lighter, but um, she's quick, she's slick. She's going to hit for her, for her weight category. So let me ask you a question there, uh, Jessica, real quick. If you were to fight Amanda Serrano, how would that fight go? Damn, I'm going to have to. First of all, she's southpaw, so. <laughs> um, uh -huh. I have to be, I would have to. I would have to. Fuck, it'd be a war. Um, see, I haven't thought about that. We're talking about like. Decision or stoppage? Sorry? Are we talking decision or stoppage? Between me and Amanda Serrano? Yeah. Well, if you guys were to fight. Well, it'd be difficult for me to stop her. She's, she's, you know, I think it would be like a toe-to-toe. -to -toe, a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight. You know, after I get through Heather Hardy, that is a fight that, you know, may come next. The reason yeah. why the reason why I ask you because you know she just fought Amanda yeah. Serrano and it was uh it was yeah. it was a tough fight you know what I'm saying they really they really put it all out there you know what I'm saying for the city of New York you know what I'm saying they put it down so um I I just wanted to ask your mindset like because that kind of for me gauge how you looking at this fight with Heather you no know, is it with Heather that Jamaican right. came on with Heather <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they're they're completely different different fighters right it's like i wouldn't mm -hmm. fight i mean it's around the same way i would fight heather hardy it's totally different like right now my mind is totally wrapped around fighting heather hardy sounds good to me you know yeah. what i'm saying we got a question from the people oh sorry you were going to continue no 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 yeah. Go ahead. A question from the people life lesson says do you find not having an athletic background was a disadvantage for your career question mark i.e have to train slash condition harder. Um, in in the beginning, yeah. Well, at the beginning, I had to, I had to, yeah, I had to work harder than everybody. Um, I wasn't in shape, so I was, I had to condition myself to, you know, to be able to 
to get through fights. Um, I worked hard. <laughs> I worked really hard. I, you know, like I said, I was in the boxing gym. I was out lifting weights, but I did the work. I put in the work. It's I've I've been boxing now for fourteen years. So now it's not difficult because you know I put in the work <laughs> the last fourteen years. Yeah. So I made up for not having an athletic background when I was when I was a kid, right? So right now, no, it's not difficult. But back then. I had to, I had to work. I had to put in overtime. So I wanted to ask you, um, I noticed early in your career, you started, you were fighting up at 150, 160. So what decision, um, mm -hmm. like, why did you decide to come oh. down to 130? Uh, I didn't decide that actually. No? Okay. I, I fought in the amateurs at 152, but I was walking around at like 165, sometimes hitting like 170. I was, I love lifting weights. You know, I like lift heavy um, and I was all about like throwing power shots. Um, but I also lived like a very stressful lifestyle. I was working multiple jobs, not sleeping well. Um, and I feel like that had a impact on, on my weight also. Um, <clears throat> so when I had my pro debut, I fought at 148 or 149. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, 148, 148. I don't know what the set weight was at, but I weighed 148 at the weigh-in. Um, and then my weight just gradually just started coming down. And then I was fighting at, uh, I went down to 140. But, I mean, I was walking around at 140. So I would, I would make 140 and then I would just stay at 140. It wouldn't really go up. Mm -hmm. So, and then all my, all my opponents I fought at 140 were ended up to be a lot heavier than me when it came to fight days. So we made a decision, like, okay, I want to try fighting at 135. And I fought at 135. I feel great. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I could actually go down to 130. So that's something that you may want to do in the future. But right now, we know we feel good at 135. And I'm going to stay at that for a bit. If an opportunity comes at, at 130, you know, we'll take it. But yeah, it just gradually just happened. It wasn't really just yeah. a decision. Back then, like people would say, like, you know, you're a 130, 135 uh, right. fighter. And I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> that, was, that was so big, right? And then I had yeah. trouble being weight at 152 in the amateurs. Right. But yeah, it just gradually just, just came off. Do you feel yourself stronger in there against when you fight fighters of that weight class? You feel the strength difference with you yeah. coming down? Do I feel do I feel the strength difference in myself? Like, yeah. Like, like uh, when you're hitting people of that weight class, like, do you see the difference in your strength now that you're being a bigger person coming down to that weight? Yeah. Yeah. Like when I was fighting at 140, a mm -hmm. lot of the girls were, because I was just walking around at 140, um, a lot of girls were, you know, they're cutting weight and then they were bouncing back up. I noticed uh, a difference in, in the weight. And that's why I decided that, you know, it's probably a good idea to, to go down if the fights, you know, if there's an opportunity, if there's <clears throat> opportunity to fight at 140 and we have an offer, you know, I'll just, I'll, I'll take it. Right. But um, if it was my decision, 135, I feel good. And I think I want to try 132. Okay. Awesome. I got some hard, I got some hard headed questions that I think are hard hidden questions, <laughs> but you are coming off of a loss. Uh-huh. Your opponent is also coming off of a loss. Mm -hmm. How important is it for you to get this victory on April 23rd? It's really important. Like this fight could, it could change my career. Like it can do a whole 360. <laughs> um, now I'm a big underdog. I'm my, my record seven and two. She's 22 and one. So she's got a lot of experience and, you know, she's well known in the sport of boxing and me getting that victory. Yes, she is. Put me right up there. For sure. You know, it's going to, yeah, I could potentially, you know, I win this fight. I'm, I could fight for a world championship after that. Yeah. That's how I see it. You know, so it's really important for me. Um, and given, you know, it, it's, it's, we both had losses. So I know we're, we're both hungry. But I just feel like this is my time. You know, this is my right. time. Well, you know, she has um, she has more fights than you do. So 
you, one would say she has more experience than you do. So she's going to look to draw on those experiences. She's been in more wars, I would say, than you have. So if it does turn out into a war, she's kind of, that one would say she's more equipped for the war. But um, what have you done from your last performance to this performance that's going to change all of that? Greg, on you. <clears throat> what have I done? Um, yeah, what have you done? Yep. Well, there's certain things in my in my last fight. Well, don't give away the game plan, but you know you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um. Basically, just all the, all my down. I I feel like my last my last performance, I performed really well against a very again a very experienced fighter, and I had to fight with a hematoma on my head for ten rounds. Um. So just my just my will to win and, you know, keep, keep fighting and all the work we've been doing in the gym, you know, like every day it's like, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. And I just have the envision of, <laughs> you know, me coming out there and I mean, it all comes down to the game plan and I don't want to give you the game plan because yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can't give us the game plan for sure. Yeah, yeah. I can't give it to you. Yeah. But, no, we're going to see April 23rd. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. It all comes down to that, but we have a game plan. Um, I'm mentally prepared, and yeah, we're gonna see. You ready? And where can we where can we see the fight? Where can we watch? Where can the people watch the fight? It's gonna be uh, streamed live on UFC Fight Pass. UFC Fight Pass, y'all, you gotta check out this fight right here, man. I, I got some fun questions that I want to ask, um, Jessica, before we get her up out of here. Sure. But um, Greg. I know you guys come see. You go ahead first, my brother. No, I just wanted to say I actually uh, appreciate the, the fact that you're taking a fight like this because, I mean, me and Francis, we try to encourage the Canadian fighters to, you know, take a chance and, you know, fight people, you know, ranked high enough and make a splash, you know. So, um, you know, we're definitely going to be behind you with this fight. And Thank you. Um, yeah, for sure. And um, just appreciate what you're doing. But um yeah um thank you for being on the show and i know francis is gonna get to some special questions some world famous questions that <laughs> francis gotta ask everybody so take it away francis you know i got <laughs> to do it right you gotta uh, do it man yeah first before i do that though i got to give the people the love because without them you know what i'm saying they don't want why we're here tuning in and whatnot so sir bishop has a question he says being a heavyweight power puncher can you describe to us how you felt after you turned pro and got your first stoppage. When I got stopped, um, no, when you got your first stoppage, like you stopped somebody for the first time. But I haven't stopped somebody in the pros. Well, there you go, sir Bishop. She hasn't stopped <laughs> the pros just yet. But guess what? Not just yet. Heather Hardy might be the first might one. Be the first on one April for sure. Third, yeah. man, talk that talk. You ain't got to do it because you fighting. I'll talk that talk. Heather, <laughs> come with, with it. You better, you better train. Don't tell us about no pandemic because we're coming with it, man. We're coming oh, with I'm it. Training. I'm behind you. I'm training hard. But listen, man, let me get to the questions that I want to ask, right? So um, when you are training, right, what type of music do you like to listen to? And does that music change pre-fight before you walk out of the locker room? Honestly, I... I don't really change my music when in the gym. It's like usually the music I listen to when I'm at home. The music I listen to, I just like to feel good. I listen to hip hop. Um, I like a lot of old school. Um, dance hall, reggaeton, and when I'm cooling down, sometimes I like to listen to some R and B. You know. <laughs> hey. Does it change in uh, like for my walkout? Yeah. Uh, not necessarily. Sometimes, you know, I'm listening to a song. I'm like, I'm listening to a song like in the gym. I'm like, I like the the sound of this. You know, I, I can use it for for my walk in. That's okay. like how it. Yeah, when I'm in the gym and it's like I'm listening to something and I'm like, I'm just feeling it right, and I just decide, you know, I'm going to use this for my for my walkout. I love it. Um, my next question I wanted to ask you is, uh, if you could fill out. A Canadian arena. Which arena would that be? Arena stadium. Um, I don't really have an arena or stadium in my mind, but I would love, love to fight in my hometown. 
in Cambridge or Kitchener. It's all kind of right. Yeah, you know, I understand it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really have like an arena or stadium. In but London, just, just but your hometown would be good. Yeah. I would love to. I would love to fight in my hometown. No, Anybody in particular? Anybody in particular I would like to fight? No. Yo, no. Greg, let's make that happen, man. We're going to make that happen, man. We're gonna, <laughs> yeah, we're going to make a fight we're in Cambridge. Start campaign. Yeah. It's one thing that we're about is, you know, we want Canadian fighters to want to to want to fight here, man. They want to yeah. come home and make big events and big shows, you know what I mean? Like, put it on here. So um, that, that's one of the things that I, I want to make sure I ask all the time. Like, do you, do you have home in mind? Like, don't forget that, you know what I'm saying, you can put on them shows for the people that's been supporting you from you didn't know they were supporting you. Cause they never told you, but they gonna tell you now with their money. Don't let that go over your head. <laughs> Don't let that go over your head. <laughs> but yeah, um, my my follow up question is, um, what is your pre fight meal? Like before I fight? Yes. I usually like to eat light before I fight. Um, the day before, I like to eat pasta. Um, steak. Um, but yeah, I usually. Usually lights sometimes like I don't really have like a pre fight meal, but I'll eat like a salad with a salmon and potato, something light that I'm not gonna feel heavy. But the day before, you're like after my, I weigh in and everything, I like to carb up and eat pasta, get some red meat in me. And, and what is your and what is your post fight? guilty pleasure like i got i got to have it when i get out the ring like i got to have it like maybe didn't have it during camp but when i get out the ring i got to have it <laughs> um pizza everybody boxes again pizza everybody like, pizza or wings <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> i have a love now for mexican food and okay. my wife is actually mexican so okay she usually spoils me after fighting. <laughs> you know what? And- yeah, I've had I've had Mexican food <laughs> the last two times after the fight, so I can't even cap that fresh guac. Bop, actually, bop, I actually bop. just had some guacamole. You see, you can't be doing that. You, you can't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it. My my final question is um um well from me is uh if you were a superhero, what would be your super Hero power. What would be my superhero power? Um, you only get one. To treat cancer. Pop. That's that's, that's unique. Amazing one. I've never. That's unique. That's the first. <laughs> yeah. That's going on the list. I've never heard that. People before. asked yeah. me that, but it was just Bing just came to my mind. And, and I love that. See, that's why I ask these questions. Just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have forward to let people get a chance to know you a little bit better. But on uh, Life Lesson, go ahead, Greg. Read that question. All right. We got one more question before you get out of here from Life Lessons. Um, you moved provinces. And have you ever thought of moving to another country to advance your career? Um, not really. I, I, thought of, I thought of doing camps at other countries. Uh, mm-hmm. U.S. is always, you know, a good spot to go to. You know, I'd love to do uh, – my, my manager actually lives in Philly. I'd love to go out there. I love going to Vegas. L.A. is another spot to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd also like to go to, to Mexico and get some some training there. I, I, I'd love to travel different places and, and do some camps at different locations with uh, – get some work in with some good fighters. But I haven't thought of moving out of the country, no. <laughs> well that's all the questions all right. that i got greg is that all the questions you got yeah i have no more questions just, just want to thank you for being on the show once again i appreciate thank you for taking it. the time it's fun. It fun talking yeah. to you i just yeah, you got to come on the show <laughs> after the fight yeah. Yeah. yeah please give us the victory lap that would be amazing but i wanted to tell you before you go Canadian pride, man. We rocking with you. We supporting you. We can't see my pom poms. They're invisible. <laughs> taking them right I'm now. Watching. I'm on the top. Oh, yeah, we're gonna be watching. Man. <laughs> if we can do a live fight chat, we're definitely gonna be able to do yeah. that. Uh, and so support. So just know that uh, over here at the weigh in, you know, what I'm saying we supporting you. We are rocking with you, and we look to have you back on um, after the victory. Thank you so much, guys. All right, pleasure. have a blessed one, and shout out to wifey. Have a good night. Thank you for allowing yeah, us. You to all have a good night. Yeah. Peace. Thank you. All right. 
So yeah, man, that was the Cobra. She's gonna be in action April twenty third against Heather Hardy. Um, that's a big fight for her, man. So hopefully she yeah, comes out on top. Proper social media. We was having so much fun. Yeah. Don't you worry. You can see the social media on. Um, you can check us out on Instagram. Check out our page. You know, we're gonna post. You know, leading up to the fight, we're gonna post some more stuff. So you definitely see her face again before the fight. Um, but yeah, man. Um, yeah. it's a pleasure having her on the show. And right. yeah, man, Here's we're gonna man. have her on again, man. Like you said, to do a victory lap. She gonna she gonna do some good things. So we're definitely looking forward to that. Where Rafi at, man? Rafi, what I was up? I'm just gonna man? ask that. Yeah, where's Rafi? Yeah, time of the hour, man. He skipped on us last week. We gotta put that thing in this week. Make that thing thing happen. So yeah. Um, but yo, shout out to everybody. I hope who made their pick. Did everybody make their pick? At the hearing of my voice, I got Jamel Heron, um, by unanimous decision. You know, he could potentially get the start, but the Jackal's so tough, man. That's a tough one. It's a close fight, too. So, and uh, Greg, you rolling with uh, yeah, I'm rolling with Heron by decision as well. Um, I think he's gonna be able to use his reach and um, get the decision, but it's not gonna be an easy decision, though. Definitely, uh, Frampton's gonna, gonna definitely bring it and and pressure him, like you were saying. So, matter of fact, that fight, even man, that fight might go to a draw, yeah. Well, yeah, you I'm know gonna- what. I might that bet is a part on that, yo. 1400? Yo, yeah, you got draw on yeah, that. You got to bet draw, man. Yeah, I'm betting the draw on that right now. I'm with it. Shoot. Just know that I did it on the show. I got hearing by UD. Yes, yeah. Sir Bishop got hearing by UD as well. Oh, I should have did. I should have parlayed that. Oh. Twin Munoz got hearing by split decision. I should have parlayed that. What? Split so decision. Everybody, split decision. Everybody rocking. You got him by split too, right? You What's got him by split too, right? Harry. No, I got him by I got him by UD, but I wouldn't be surprised. I you had him by split. split. Nah, no, no. I'm saying Frampton with his pressure, he could did make. You, this did split you decision. back out? You I back out, out, man? Nah, you man. I got out. I got UD. Yeah, Frampton style. You, you never know, man. <laughs> you make it pressure. Yo, they swing some rounds your way, man. You never know. Oh, man, I'm you. you never yeah, know with yeah. them judges. You just never know. Who else, man? Who else dropping it, man? Thank y'all for tuning in, man. We appreciate you. Who else? Let us Anybody know. Anybody else got some decisions? Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Rafi Ramirez ducked out, man. Yeah, Rafi, you know what I'm saying? He don't want to help us make some moolah. You want to make this is his moolah? time of the show, man. Yeah. Friday night. Yeah, there's nothing really to bet on this time, man. The cards are kind of weak, so I just did yeah. that, that little one-two step right there. And let's see if I can, you know what I'm saying? The little engine that could, man. The little engine that could. But, yo, let me rock, yo. Right now, I'm feeling grooving right now. We about to get up out of here, but before we do, I, I just feel like, Greg, when we yeah, play, you got you to gotta rock with us, man. You got to bump, man. You be over there. I don't know, man. What you doing, man? What you- I'm working, man. I'm working. You working? And we're always, man. All right, so let's do it, man. Hey, you already know, man. This is the Wayne Show. And we do it our way over here. Let's go. Oh, no. It's the Wayne. Call up and you're waiting. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing. When you think it's about to end, should we crank it up again? Hold oh, no. up. Wayne. Wayne. Call up and you're waiting. Now we get to scrutinize everything. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge, we ain't playing, and we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up, hold up. Greg and friends just keep it popping, keep it popping. Dropping knowledge, switching up the daily topics, switch it up. The latest interviews, okay, okay, we got, okay, we got. Your favorite podcast, my boy, yeah, we the hottest. Hold up, you gotta wait, articulate, explain it, explain it. Lay it all out for the bait and dropping game, no, we ain't playing. Two sport fans, let me know where you at. It's all about a fight, who got that strap? All your biases can slay, unless you boys are getting the fade. Hold up. It's the way in, call up and you're waiting. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge, we ain't playing. When you think it's about to end, should we crank it up again? Hold up. Yeah, man, we about to get up out of here, man. Ain't no sense we hold up your time. Oh, so much more news and notes to talk about. We got to get it back. Um, Devin Haney, Jorge Linares. Devin Haney and Jorge Linares. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be May 29th at the Mikolo, Mikolo Arena in Las Vegas, man. The old Mandolin Bay. Um, Ryan Garcia, Javier Fortuna. Their yeah. fight has a tentative date. 
of uh what is it july 10th if i'm not july. mistaken yeah july and um it's gonna be on the zone Oh. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be uh, on the zone, and uh, we also got that Ben Askren and Jake Paul card on Triller. Triller coming through. Shout out to uh, that's this weekend, huh? That's this weekend, right? No, next weekend. Next weekend. 17th. Yeah. All right. And then we got you know that Three Lions promotion card on the twenty third. That's gonna be fire. You know, so we just had the Cobra on. It's gonna be performing, right? No. Uh, no, no, nah. that that different different you know what? That card yeah. in Montreal that, um, it Bro, just got a lot of cards on the 23rd. Did it? Yeah, the card in Montreal with Josh Wagner and those guys got canceled today, man. The, the COVID restrictions, that, yeah, the COVID restrictions, man. The they three locked lions down, card? not three lions. The, the, the eye of the tiger, eye of the tiger, yeah, with, wow. with um, Steve and all the yeah, Steve yeah. Claggett, Josh Wagner. Wow, yeah, man, it got canceled that's crazy. today. Yo, yeah. there's a lot of news and notes going on in boxing, man, that we can talk about. But we, what we got to do, Greg? Got to get up out of here, man. We, we got to get up out of here, man. We'll catch y'all, man. We're going to tell a friend to tell a friend. Don't forget, smash the thumbs up button, the subscribe button. It does help with the growth and the visibility. We'll get back with you. Uh, we might, I might do live fire chat tomorrow. Greg, I hope you're available. If you are, let's get it rocky, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. And Carl Frampton out there in Dubai. And right now, we got to say goodbye. Peace. Yeah, man. Everybody enjoy your